So last video we got a comment saying that I should make a tier list of Australian animals. And I thought, sure, what the hell, what a cute little idea. And now I'm here staring at a list of over 60 animals that I gotta put into a tier list. Now this isn't a tier list of how dangerous they are, or how cute they are, or how iconic they are, or how endangered they are. All of those things, they will be influencing factors. We're just trying to find out which Australian animal is the best. I'll be including facts about them, as well as my personal experiences with them as an Australian. So strap on in, because we got a lot to cover. Now obviously I won't be getting to every single Australian animal, and for example, all kangaroos I'll be lumping into the same category. Now we're going to be starting with mammals, but there's three different kinds of mammals in Australia. We've got monotremes, marsupials, and placentals. Now you and me, we are placentals, so when Babby is formed in the womb, it stays there for a long time and gets nutrients from the placenta, right? Now marsupials are different because while they also give birth to live young, they do not have the same kind of long gestation period as a placental would have. Instead, they have a pouch and they give birth to a little, little, teeny, tiny little baby, and that hangs out in the pouch and gets nutrients from the mother's uh, tea. And when I say teeny, tiny little baby, I remember mean really small. Like, a kangaroo baby is the size of a jelly bean. So, the gestation period on a human baby is 9 months, but for a kangaroo, it'd be about 30 days. And then that hangs out in the pouch. Honestly, it sounds like a better system. Am I right, ladies? Speaking of kangaroos, what a great place to start the tier list. Kangaroos are such a good baseline, they're probably the most iconic Australian animal. There's actually more kangaroos in Australia than there are humans. I think it's about double. Now, I would put kangaroos in C tier because they're very basic. However, in saying this, they taste delicious. You can buy their meat at any Australian supermarket, and also they're really cute. So we will be putting them in B tier. Now, is a kangaroo too big for you? I hear ya, I hear ya. Have you ever heard of a wallaby? A wallaby is just a smaller kangaroo. It's not just a small kangaroo, it's a different species, but essentially that's what it is. Now, I will put wallabies in the same tier of kangaroos, but one time when I was camping, I saw one go into a campsite and steal a full bottle of open red wine and run off into the bushes with it. So it is for that reason we will put wallaby in A tier. Now, is a wallaby too big for you? I hear ya, I hear ya. What about a paddy melon? A paddy melon is a smaller version of that. Now, they're probably the least common of the three, but I wouldn't say they're different enough for me to separate them from kangaroos, so we're gonna be putting them in B tier. Now, is a paddy melon too big for you? Okay, okay, I hear ya. God, you really put me through it here, but I'm gonna do my best. Have you ever heard of a quokka? Quokkas hang out on little islands on the west coast of Australia, and they've recently hit international fame for being the happiest looking animal on the planet, and all these tourists go there and get selfies with them now. Now, I think they're cute. I think they're charming. They're about the size of a cat. We will be putting the quokka into A tier. I think I'm happy with that. I think I'm happy with that so far. Now is the quokka too big for you? Oh jeez man. Oh man. Well, how about a batong? Why are so many animals in Australia just little guys that love to hop around? I don't know. Batong, we're gonna put you into C tier, alright? Because I'm getting sick of these little guys that like to hop around. And... If I'm being honest, they're getting too small. But what's this? You want a small little guy that hops around? Okay, all right, jeez, all right, back off, man. All right, what about a potteroo? We're really getting a diminishing return in cuteness here. Potteroos, we're gonna put into D tier, all right? Now, I promise we're gonna be ending the bit there. There's gonna be no more little guys that hop around, at least for the next five minutes. Now, do you love kangaroos, but have always wished? Oh, gosh, I wish it was in a tree. Well, do I have good news for you? What about a tree kangaroo? That's right, they made them go in trees now. Now, these are in the same family as kangaroos and paddy melons and wallabies and all that. In my opinion, I find them a little bit freaky and a little bit uglier. So it's for that reason, we'll be putting them in C tier, but we're gonna put them at the top of C tier. How are we feeling about that? We okay? Now let's stick to the trees for a moment. We gotta talk about koalas. Or as an American would say, koala bear. Now I personally have mad beef with koalas, all right? They look chill and cuddly, right? But they're super, super loud. And the vast majority of them have chlamydia. For not practicing safe sex, we are gonna be putting koalas into D tier. Now as a reminder, all these are marsupials, so they all have pouches. But this next animal has a backwards pouch. It's the wombat. And the reason they have a backwards pouch is because when they're digging the holes, uh, they would be blasting their young in the face with dirt if their pouch went forwards. Again, this is an animal that looks cute and cuddly. However, if you try and go into the same burrow as it, it will crush your head onto the roof of the burrow with with the big plate on its ass. Also, another fun fact about wombats, they shit perfect cubes. But we will be putting wombats into B tier. Unfortunately, we have to turn our eyes to Tasmania for a second and take a gander at the Tasmanian devil. Now, this is most famous for being Taz from Looney Tunes. This is the largest living marsupial kind and they have the strongest bite force in comparison to body mass out of any land mammal in the world. Now, I think that's incredible. And Tasmanian Devils, you are going to be shooting right up to the top of A tier for that. And if you're a true believer, you know that's not the largest living carnivorous marsupial in the world. You would know that that belongs to the thylacine. Although thylacines, otherwise known as the Tasmanian Tiger, have been declared to be extinct, I believe differently. They gotta be out there and we're gonna find them soon. And when we do, I'm gonna be laughing. Thylacines, you were taken too soon from us. We're gonna be putting you into S tier. Just a stunning unique 
unique animal. I love them. I love a thylacine. They were tragically hunted to extinction in the 1930s. I believe the last one died in a zoo from exposure. Like, awful, absolute tragedy. Like, even if thylacines are extinct in the wild, there is still hope yet. They are attempting to clone the thylacine. And who is helping these efforts? Well, that would be the fat-tailed Dunnart. These are in the same family as the Tasmanian Devil. And they're not to be confused for a rodent. For being a hero, the fat-tailed Dunnart is going to be... At the top of A tier. We support our heroes here on the Toddy Boy channel. Also not to be confused with a rodent is the Antichinus. Antichinuses have an absolutely tragic story. Now, unfortunately for the males of the species, the males die immediately after mating season. They have a 100% mortality rate. They literally die from the stress and the chemicals that their body pumps into them. The females survive multiple mating seasons. The males, they've got one, and then they're done. I feel for you guys. I feel for you. Antichinus, we are going to put you... Up at the top of A tier. Oh, uh, before and behind the Tasmanian Devil. We're going to put you just before, okay? In solidarity. Next up, we got one of my personal favorites on the list, the Numbat. Numbats only eat termites. They got a really long tongue. They look cute as hell. They're very, very endangered. I've never seen one in real life. I would love to one day. Numbat, we're going at the top of A tier. If you think I've been very generous with these animals, by the way, just wait till I get to the birds. It's gonna be a massacre. Next up, we've got the sugar glider. They've got a gliding membrane so they can go from tree to tree. Although they look very similar to the flying squirrel, it's a good example of convergent evolution. The two have no relation to each other whatsoever. Also, tragically, when I looked these up on YouTube, uh, all of them were like someone's pet. None of them were wild ones. It was, I got a bit sad from that. Anyway, they're pretty unique. They love eating sugar. I love eating sugar. We'll be putting these at the top of B tier. Next up, we've got the bilby. Although it's very cute and very endangered, we've got some minor beef with it. There was a good portion of my life where bilbies were trying to replace the Easter Bunny in Australia. It never took off. But, however, bilby, we will be putting you at the top of C tier. Do I feel bad for putting an endangered animal at the top of C tier? A little bit. Next up, we've got the quoll. I love these. They're a cute little carnivorous marsupial. I saw one of these in the wild, and it was yawning, and it had a lot of teeth, and I, I liked that. Unfortunately, I don't think it measures up to the A tier. I don't think it measures up. We'll be putting it at the top of B. I feel comfortable with that. Next up is a mammal I have very, very personal beef with. We've got the brush-tailed possum. These guys are loud. They'll hide in your roof, and they scream at each other all night. I've probably had months of sleepless nights in my life solely because of the brush-tailed possums. One time, I built a possum house so they would evacuate the roof, and instead, that just brought more to my neighborhood. They're absolute goblins. I love little mischievous guys, but maybe brush-tailed possums are kind of pushing it too far for me. Brush-tailed possums, we're putting you in E tier. The only reason they're not going into F tier is because they are fun little guys to hang around as long as they're not being a menace, you know what I'm saying? Now on the opposite side of that, we have the ringtail possum. They are gorgeous. They are flawless. Just cute little guys hanging out. We're gonna put this at the bottom of A tier. I don't feel comfortable putting it higher up. Just very cute. Very cute all around. Next up, we have the pygmy possum. This is super, super, super critically endangered and in this image, it's the size of a guy's thumb. I thought that was very cute. Not cute enough for A tier, but We'll put it at the end of B. These guys are directly losing their habitat due to climate change, as well as the natural food source has completely dwindled. It's a tragedy all around. We gotta put them in at least B tier. Next up, we have the most elusive animal on the entire list. It's so elusive that when I went to find videos of them on YouTube, I couldn't find a single one. Probably most Australians don't even know this exists, but this is the marsupial mole. They burrow around in sand dunes, and the only images I could see of them on Google are them cramming their face full of lizard and bug. Now, I love a little guy cramming his face with lizard and bug and I love them all. So we will be putting this at S tier. Next up, we've got the Bandicoot. Bandicoots love digging up your whole yard looking for bugs. Also, famously, Crash Bandicoot is a Bandicoot. Don't think he looks much like a Bandicoot, but what are you gonna do? Bandicoots, for digging up my well planted garden, we are gonna be putting you in D tier but above koalas. Controversial. I got a lot of controversial opinions here. Now we're done with marsupials. We're going to be moving on to monotremes. Now, before I get any further into that, I should clarify that monotremes are egg-laying mammals. Again, there's the three kinds, placental, marsupial, monotreme. Who could possibly not like an echidna? They are just funny little guys waddling around, eating bugs, covered in spikes. I would argue one of the cutest animals on the list by far. I've seen one a couple of times in the wild and those were the best times of my life. I just love a spiky little guy and for that reason we'll be putting them at the top of A tier. Now the other monotreme on the list is probably my favorite animal on the entire list. They're pudgy. They're soft. They're semi-aquatic. They got a leathery duck bill and a beaver tail. They sense their surroundings with electrolocation and the males have a venomous spur. I am talking about the platypus. Platypus is 
is Easy S tier. They just look so cute. They're so funny. They're iconic. When they were first found and taken to England, people literally did not believe that this could possibly be an animal. And it's for that reason that the platypus deserves to be at the top of S tier. And I won't hear anything about it. You can disagree with any other thing in this list, but if you say platypus isn't number one, you are absolutely wrong. Now that's all the monotremes and marsupials done. We will be going to the placentals now. First up, we've got the dingo. This is a wild dog species that was first introduced to Australia 4,000 years ago. A lot of Australians love them. A lot of Australians hate them. For me, it's a dog. And I cannot possibly put a dog anywhere below a B tier. Moving on to the flying fox. This is the largest bat species in Australia. But they're not like your Dracula bat that eats blood. They are nectar eating bats. The sun doesn't set in Sydney. Simply the sky is blocked out with these guys. If you ever come to Australia and go to the botanical gardens, you can just see them hanging out in the trees. I think we gotta do B. I think we gotta put them in B. Yeah, we'll put we'll put them in B. Also, I'm switching the place for Wombat. I'm moving Wombat up. Wombat deserves to be at the top. Next up is the spin effects hopping mouse. I told you guys that we were not done with little guys who like to hop. For me, controversially, although it's very cute, I gotta put it lower, simply because it is outclassed by other little guys on the list, like the Darnart and the Antichinus. Sorry, Spin Effects Hoppin' Mouse, you were going in C tier. Next on our list is the camel, and you may be thinking to yourself, Todd, the camel is not an Australian animal, but I wish to counter that, and I say uh, that there is a million camels in Australia. Literally a million. That is so many. We could take every pygmy possum, quokka, numbat, Put that number all together, and we would not even have a hundredth of how many camels there are in this country. That is not maths. Don't check me up on that. That could be completely off. Now, all the camels are feral species. They're not the worst of the feral species. They seem to have adapted to the country pretty well, and there's arguments that they're taking the place of the megafauna that used to live in Australia. Camels were first brought over to Australia in the 1800s. Majority of Australia is a desert, so camels are perfectly adapted for living here. Also, I love a camel. I really do love a camel. We cannot put a feral animal higher than D tier, but we will put the camel in D tier, okay? We're turning our eyes to the ocean now. I've put sea lions and seals in the same category. I know I shouldn't have done that, and for that I want to apologize. I think these animals are gorgeous. There's one that hangs out by the Sydney Opera House, who I love. I think its name's Benny, or something like that. Help me, Benny! <laughs> you guys know what a seal is. We're gonna put a seal at the top of C. C for seal. Okay? That's the only reason. Next up, we got the bottlenose dolphin. You know what you've done. You know what you've done. Now, this may look like a manatee. It's actually called a dugong. Uh, the difference between manatees and dugongs, dugongs are exclusively a marine mammal. Also, dugongs have a different shaped tail. The dugong tail resembles more of a whale tail. Dugongs, I love them. Just a chubby little guy floating around the ocean. We're going to put a dugong into B tier, okay? B for very good. Now, that's all our mammals done. We're going to be moving on to birds now. And as I said before, I got beef with a lot of birds. For a couple of months of every year, there is a blight on this nation. For nine months of the year, magpies are just chill, peaceful little guys. Guys. But when it's egg laying season, these guys turn into demons. Nobody is safe. The atrocities I've seen these birds commit is unfounded. Magpies swoop to protect their nest, but also for some reason they swoop in about a hundred meter radius of their nest. None of us want to mess with your eggs. Stay away from me. I have seen grown men walk down the street with ice cream containers on their heads with googly eyes on the back to prevent themselves by being swooped by these birds. And I've seen these grown men die to these birds. Anyway, we'll be putting that into... E tier. E for egg. Next up, we've got the butcher bird. And you may think, that's a bit niche to have on the list. And I say to you, I got personal scars. I've been hurt before. For the crimes against me, you're going in F tier. Speaking of birds that are menaces to society, uh, every single cockatoo. Have you got something nice in your backyard? You don't anymore. These guys stole it. Or they tore it apart. They're also really, really loud. Now, I would put them in E tier. However, I love an animal with a mischievous personality, all right? I love a little menace to society. So we will be putting them into the bottom of D tier. Now, when I said all cockatoos, I don't mean galahs. I would never mean them. Beautiful little angels. Galahs A tier. Rainbow lorikeets. Very pretty little bird. For their beauty alone, we will be putting them in B tier. B for beauty. Next up is the masked lapwing, aka the plover, aka the bird that ruined my entire childhood. For some reason, they like to lay their eggs in the middle of open fields. So if you wanted to play soccer out in the oval, you can't anymore. They've got it sectioned off. They've got a VIP rope perimeter, okay? That says this is plover territory. This isn't for you. For extra fear, they've got hooks on their wings. They have legitimate hooks on their wings. Put it at the top of E tier. Next up is the ibis, aka the bin chicken. I love these guys, but they are disgusting. They hide out in 
bins, they pull out the trash everywhere. These were once majestic wetland birds, and now they exclusively live in bins. Also one time, an Ibis stole nachos out of my hands. I'd put them in D tier, however recently, a guy on the news tried eating one of them, and I feel especially bad for them right now, so we will be putting them at the bottom of C tier. Now that comes to the end of birds we got beef with, we're going on to some stunners right now. How big do you like your bird? I hope you like it bigger, because we got the emu. That's the second largest bird in the world, I think. Although they're a bit scary, they're funny, they're goofballs. And look, yes, they won a war against us. And because history is always on the side of the winners, we got to put the emu into A tier. Now, although every night I wake up in a cold sweat, having flashbacks to the emu war, there's really only one bird that haunts my nightmares, and that is the cassowary. These are modern day velociraptors. They are terrifying. They are territorial. It's one of the most dangerous animals in Australia. You do not want to mess with this. I think they're gorgeous though. And we love danger here, so we are going to be putting the cassowary. We're going to put it in the high A tier. Next up is the kookaburra. This bird has a very iconic call in which it sounds like it's laughing. We love that. That's going, uh, that's going B tier. That's going in the high Bs. Speaking of iconic bird calls, next we've got the lyrebird. The lyrebird is renowned for its mimicry. I don't believe it's got its own specific bird call, but it mimics the bird calls of every other bird around it to find a mate. Now, because of the encroaching human populations on the lyrebird habitat, They've started mimicking like human interactions and chainsaws and stuff like that. <laughs> that is truly amazing. And also what beautiful plumage these birds have. Lyre birds gotta go in A tier. Pelican. I love a pelican. I don't need to say much about pelicans. You know I love a pelican. I can't put a pelican above B tier. We gotta put it... We gotta put it in B. We gotta put a pelican in B. Controversial. Closing off the birds, we've got the little penguin. This is the littlest of all the penguins. Just a funny little guy who loves to hop around. I would argue this is the cutest bird on the list, maybe the cutest bird in the world. Penguins could do no wrong. And you can't put the littlest of all the penguins anywhere other than S tier. We're moving on to bugs, and the next two are spiders. So this is the official spider warning. First is the Sydney funnel web spider. This is argued to be the most venomous spider in all of the world. And they exclusively live in an 100 kilometer radius around Sydney. Somehow we just coexist with these guys. I don't know what's happening there. No one's ever died from them. Well, at least not since the antivenom has been developed. So no real dramas there, but they're sketchy as hell. We're gonna put the funnel web into D tier. It's cool because it's deadly. It's not cool because it's everywhere and that's scary. Next up, I'm coming in with a controversial opinion. We've got the Huntsman spider. Now these spiders are super, super common in homes in Australia. Do not be too scared by that fact. I don't mean to sketch you out, but these guys do get to the size of a dinner plate. However, on the positive side, they don't attack humans and they don't make webs. These guys just kind of run around the house and eat all the mosquitoes and stuff like that. So these guys are kind of bros. Now, as a con, obviously, they're freaking scary, man. That's scary. And if one jumps out at you when you're driving your car, that's, that's terrible, man. So, for that reason, we're gonna put this guy into B tier. B for bro, okay? B for bro spider, okay? The giant pink slug is only found in one place in Australia, on Mount Caputa. Here, it was isolated from all other species for millions and millions of years. I think it's neat, so we will be putting it in A tier. How can you not put a giant pink slug in A tier, huh? So, these are glowworms. They're not your typical glowworms. These are the larval stage of a specific species of fungal gnat. They make this long, glowing, sticky web to attract prey. I think it's gorgeous. They're only found in select caves in Australia. But I thought they're neat. I thought, why not put them on the list? We're going to put them in A tier. Very unique, very pretty. Yabbies are a crayfish. They're an iconic part of every Australian's childhood. Going around catching yabbies in the streams. We're going to put yabbies into B tier. Coming up next, we've got amphibians. First, we got the green tree frog. This is probably the most common frog in the pet trade in the world. He's a little icon. If I close my eyes and say frog, this is what I think of. We're going to put this frog in the high B, at the top of B. The corroboree frog is a tiny little endangered frog. It's also the only frog species to develop its own poison rather than get it from the food that it eats. I love these little guys. I got my own little plush one. We're going to put it into A tier. Next up is the cane toad. This is another feral species. They were introduced to Australia to get rid of the cane beetle. Turns out they don't eat the cane beetle. Now they're a plague on the country and that hurts me so much to say because I think they're really cute and funny. But unfortunately, I can't help it. I have to put them in F tier. I love them. I wish they weren't a feral pest species, you know. Now we're going to aquatic animals and the first thing I have to ask you is, has anyone seen my son? That's right, clownfish are up first. Fun fact about clownfish, uh, after the movie Finding Nemo, 
pet sales skyrocketed and so did the wild capture of clownfish. What a way to miss the concept of the movie. Clownfish we're going to put in B tier. The blue ringed octopus is one of the cutest animals on this list but also it's one of the most dangerous. It's one of the most venomous aquatic animals and I like to call it the tourist bane because you always see these videos of tourists picking these up and playing with them having no idea how venomous they are. I got such a soft spot for these guys we got to put them in S tier. I love an octopus. But you know what I don't love? A box jellyfish. It's a jellyfish that can kill you. That's going in F tier. If you're going to kill me, at least have a personality about it. Now, the ocean being the way that it is, it's all connected. So there's not a lot of, like, specific ocean animals to Australia. And this includes sharks. There's not a lot of shark species that are just uniquely Australian. So this, I've just got general sharks here, and we're going to put them in C tier. Now, you guys know I love sharks, but this is a list for Australian animals, and their Australianness is low. Now, although I just put all sharks into the same category, we've got one shark that we've put in a separate one. And that is the Wobbegong shark. Now, why is the Wobbegong in a separate category? One, they look funny, and two, sometimes people step on them, and then the sharks bite them. They're not out to attack humans, just sometimes they get stepped on accidentally. So Wobby Gongs, we're gonna put you... I guess we're just gonna put them right next to sharks. Maybe I shouldn't have separated them, if I'm just gonna put them next to sharks. I don't know. I don't know why I did that. Speaking of fish that are commonly stepped on, how about a stonefish? Stonefish can spend a whole 24 hours out of water. You can be walking down the beach, and suddenly a spike goes through your foot, and now suddenly, you're poisoned. Just a cruel design. Just a cruel design all around. We're putting this in F tier. We're going to put it above the cane toad, though. We should move the cane toad right down, actually. We've got to move cane toad down. Now, as an easy transition, we're going from marine animals to reptiles. And we're going to start with the sea turtle. Now, we're talking about green sea turtles, loggerheads, uh, leatherbacks. We've put them all into the same category. And again, like sharks, they're kind of found all over the place. I love them. They look very regal. We're going to have to put them in C tier, though. We've got to put them in C. We're putting them with the sharks. Again, I really like sea turtles. It's just that they're not very iconically Australian. They're all over the shop. Now, if a sea turtle is a king, then a freshwater turtle is just a special little guy. This is a long neck turtle. They're cute. They got a little funny face. I like them. It's for this reason we will be putting them into mid B tier. Right there looks good. That looks good. And we're moving on to lizards, and we're going to start with the largest lizard in Australia. That's right. It's the goanna. Goannas are a menace to every campsite. They're very threatening. They've got massive claws. They scare me, but I respect them nonetheless. I'm going to put a goanna into high C tier at the top of C tier. Although I'm afraid of them, I respect them. And it's always exciting to see one around the campsite. Next lizard is the frill neck lizard. This lizard has a frill on it. They also can like run on their back legs. Pretty neato. Frill neck lizard, we are putting you in B tier. We're gonna put you just under the kangaroo. Next lizard is the blue tongue lizard. Its tongue is blue. For that reason alone, blue tongue lizard's gotta be an A tier. They're a very iconic lizard. A lot of people have them in their backyards. They're like that neighbor that you like and they show up occasionally just for a little chat. Eat a couple snails, then they bugger off home. We're gonna put a blue tongue in A tier. We're gonna put it under the quokka though. The thorny devil is perhaps the cutest lizard on the list. Just a funny little spiky guy. I love him. It's also the sole species in the genus Moloch. I like it. We gotta put it in high B tier. In between kookaburra and the turtle. The inland taipan has the most toxic venom out of any snake in the world. One bite has enough lethality to kill a hundred fully grown adult humans. That is terrifying, but also I don't know how you would do that uh, realistically. Like there's already not much venom in the bite. How do you split that a hundred ways, huh? Think about it. Inland taipan, for being the most deadly snake on the planet, you gotta be in... Oh, we gotta put you in A tier. Now, this is the next snake on the list. But wait, what's that? This isn't a snake at all. This is a legless lizard. That's right. In Australia, we make lizards without legs. I tricked you by putting it with the snake, but this, this is a legless lizard. Consider yourself pranked. We'll put it in B tier for being very unique, okay? We're at the final animal on the list, and we have saved one of the best for last, it's the saltwater crocodile. They're one of the oldest creatures on the planet. They're the largest living reptile. They have the strongest bite force out of any animal. They're vicious, they're aggressive, and they're impressive. How could we not put the saltwater crocodile in S tier? How could we not? Saltwater crocodile, you are going uh, right here in S tier. And folks, this leaves our tier list completed. I'm gonna have a quick look over and see if I'm totally happy with all these. So in S tier, we've got platypus, blue ring, octopus, thylacine, saltwater crocodile, little penguin, and marsupial mole. In A tier, we've got numbat, echidna, 
Giant Pink Slug, Cassowary, Fat Tail Dunart, Antichinus, Emu Lyrebird, Tasmanian Devil, Galar, Corroboree Frog, Wallaby, Quokka, Blue Tongue Lizard, Ringtail Possum, Glow Worms, and Inland Taipan. In B tier, we've got the Green Tree Frog, Wombat, Pelican, Dugong, Quoll, Kookaburra, Thorny Devil, Freshwater Turtle, Sugar Glider, Flying Fox, Lorikeet, Dingo, Kangaroo, Frilled Neck Lizard, Patty Melon, Yabby, Pygmy Possum, Huntsman Spider, Clownfish, and Legless Lizard. In C tier, we have Goanna, Seal, All Sharks, Sea Turtle, Bilby, Tree Kangaroo, Batong, Potteroo, Spinifex, Hopping Mouse, and Ibis. D tier, we've got Bandicoot, Koala, oh, yeah, sure. Camel, Cockatoo, and Funnelweb Spider. E tier, we've got the Masked Lapwing, Brushtail Possum, and Magpie. And in F tier, we have the Stonefish, Butcher Bird, Bottlenose Dolphin, Cane Toad, and Box Jellyfish. That's my official tier list. If any of you have any problems with this, please let me know in the comments. If you disagree with me, I'd love to hear it. Unless you don't believe that the platypus should have the number one spot, in which case, get stuffed. What was your favorite animal on the list? Did you learn something today? Did you learn a fun fact? Did you learn about a new animal that you didn't know before? Did I miss an animal? Oh gosh, I hope not. If I did miss an animal or one of you leaves a very convincing comment that changes one of my rankings, I will absolutely make a part two to this video. All right, guys, I will catch you in the next video. I'll see you next time. Uh, uh, good day. Uh, goodbye. What's good day for goodbye? Goodbye.